another quick video in regards to something that is extremely impossible to find in the Christian faith without the word I was using earlier was intensity. Intensity meaning like there's an intense perspective that the church has during some mighty times of revival. It's like a magnified view, you know, a really concentrated view on things that is not right um, in our hearts. When we can magnify the sight of God, magnify the severity of God, and be able to really, re really understand what the Bible is telling God's people, what he requires of them to, to be real with him and to main, you know, to truly maintain a clear walk with God, to, to maintain a true walk with God and not let it turn into something else, knowing that he can make you believe that you're all right when you're really not, if that's what you want. He says that for those that don't love the truth, he'll give you a strong delusion and help you believe the lie that you're okay when you're really not. That's very scary. I'm actually going to do another video about that sometime, about all the scriptures where God helps people to believe a lie. It's a very, very controversial topic, but it's very, very true. But uh, the intensity factor is what I was thinking about, because that's what made me understand how serious God is about cleaning up your life, about cleaning up your past, cleaning up all of your sins, everything that's undone, get it done. Don't assume that because you go to church and you look good to certain people that that's it. It's not it. The intensity factor is well removed from a lot of Christian churches that doesn't focus on the personal responsibility of the soul and the duties that we must be doing and the things we must not be doing. There's several things listed in Ezekiel 18, which is going to be a part of um, something I'll talk about later. But it's in there. It tells you all the things that you should be doing, shouldn't be doing. The list of things that people will be doing if they're going to heaven and the things that you won't be doing if you're not, you know, if you're going to be escaping hell. Things you, things that you would do if you're going to go to hell, the death list and such like that. There's a lot of them in the Bible. But Ezekiel 18 is a great one because it says it over and over again, making it clear that if you do the right thing, you'll live. If you do wrong, you will die. Very, very scary chapter. Very, very convicting. And it really hones in on the intensity factor that must remain in the churches. Um, I visited a church today, and I liked it, singing hymns, conservative church, and talking about helping other people, which is a super huge part of Ezekiel 18. And a lot of places the Bible talks about it, old and new, about God's people. The reason why you're not okay with God right now is because you don't help hurting people. You don't help the poor. You don't help the hungry. You don't help the people who don't have clothes and such like that. You don't help the, the poor, which we always will have. Something that we always must be a part of as, as God's people is helping the hurting and make sure we use wisdom in that. I've heard people try to reach out and they end up backfiring in a really, really bad way because there's wisdom in how it's done. But we got to make sure as a body we find wise ways of reaching out. But uh, anyway, the intensity factor of how God is definitely not joking around when he says this is the requirements these laws that I have for the soul who wants to go to heaven is as serious as the laws of nature, the laws of gravity, the laws of thermodynamics, all these absolute laws, the laws of, um, the laws of, I forgot all the other words, I forgot all these other scientific terms, the laws of science, the laws of nature, laws of everything, quant, you know, um, the cosmological model, all these laws in the cosmos and everything and how it all moves together perfectly so does god's word and when we stop taking god's severe commandments extremely seriously we run into the place where we lose the intensity and start to assume things that isn't really true and starting to become lax with our convictions before the lord and it's extremely dangerous because if we don't go back to the real command real commands not the assumption land but the real commands we're going to take a risk of hearing from the Lord, you know, and he'll help us. He'll help you. Well, I went to a prophet. He said everything was fine. God helped that prophet who didn't want the truth either to help confirm to you that you and your self-deception was okay. Very, very scary. Does God lie? Ezekiel 14 says that he does. 
and several, I have like 40 or five, 50 different scriptures where God in the Bible helps people not understand purposely because they don't want to know the truth, helps them get what they want, and other kind of things of blinding their eyes and what have you, like at uh, Sodom and Gomorrah or whatever. But anyway, I guess I'll tell you too, the reason why I haven't been doing services, there's some resistance that's uh, not really worth going into right now, but uh, I've been using the time off of um, setting up for the service and all my preparations just going into kind of a documentary that is closely related to something I've been wanting to do for years. I've been wanting to do a sermon or a documentary kind of a thing and showing the long version of how to understand end times with the Bible only and never minding a lot of what's been taught in mainstream churches. A lot of it's just careless stuff from like Darbyism or whatever you want to call it, the pre-tribulation rapture and stuff like this that I'm very not okay with. Um, stuff like that from Darby or it comes from Seventh-day Adventist is also popular. Finding some of their material online or timelines or you're going to find stuff that comes from is it dispensationalism or Seventh-day Adventist. So I guess dispensationalism pretty much sums it up. There, I think that's a lot of where the popularity of uh, pre-tribulation rapture and such like this comes from. I think it's an extremely dangerous doctrine. But um, so, yeah, this one I'm working on right now, um, I've been working on it. Instead of doing two different sermons, I'm doing, I've been preparing for this thing and making several dozens and dozens of screens. They're probably going to be like one to 200 different screens when I'm done with it and talking through a lot of material and showing a lot of scripture to defend my positions on basically it's American history and communist a a attacks coming in and showing you how we have got to look at government under a proper light. Under one light, we have to hold it under great regard and pray for our leaders and obey the leaders. There's a place for that. Amen. And then there's another place to see the exact opposite. And so you'll see all that. I'm going to carefully defend it with scripture. I've put it all together. I've got tons of material over all the years, but it's all scattered. And it takes me a long time to put it together carefully so I can present my case that I've been working on for years. And I want to do one of, you know, spiritual warfare, governments and such like that throughout the history of the world and how it's going to lead to where we're going and also how to lead to understanding the end times from there. There's a lot of different principles you got to know before you even get there. That's why I call it at the end of the book. It's at the end of the book. And if we really are careful to learn the Bible, um, even throughout the prophet books, there's a lot of really imperative um, doctrine and theological understandings and spiritual principles and law and grace and times of mercy and times of running out of mercy. A lot of things like this that we can understand. Uh, really, really important to know. Another thing I learned today that was really, really important while I was going through my material that was quite scary, kind of like the deception thing, but it was scary in a different way, where Josiah, perfect king, says in one of the places, it mentions in like three different places, in Jeremiah, also in Chronicles, and also in Kings. The Chronicles ones is the best one where it actually shows Pharaoh Necho prophesying don't mess with me because God told me to come and wipe out these other guys in, Gar in Armageddon. And Josiah didn't listen. And he went out there against the word of God and got killed for it. So you have this guy who's like Satan incarnate. And he, tell, he says, I'm prophesying by the mouth of God. Don't mess with me or I'll kill you. And Josiah went out there anyway. And I was like, why? This crazy event. Literally a perfect king. And it's almost like to say, but because of the sin of his grandson Manasseh, now he is busted to suffer like temporary lapse of sanity to come against the prophecy of, of, of a, a man who's not even a godly man. Because that's one of my parts of my, in my doctrine is to show you how this government leader who is Satan incarnate actually prophesies truth. A lot of people are going to say, you're crazy. I was like, hey, I'll prove it to you later. I, I Everything I get is from the Bible, carefully looked over for years. I don't say stuff willy-nilly. I'm carefully over this stuff for years. And if I ever find out I'm wrong, I would change, of course, or re-examine things, look at things further, tighten it, sharpen things up, and I, I do. But really, it's not false. 
So that was pretty radical to think about. But the point was, is that like because of the sin of Manasseh was so severe, even a perfect king did not rectify the problem. God's people were still in jeopardy because of the severity of the sin before setting up that idol that Manasseh set up in um, Chronicles. And he repents. It's a super good story in Kings and Chronicles. But if you read the prayer of Manasseh in the Apocrypha, you get to hear him speak in that thing. And it is great. There's a lot of stuff in the Apocrypha that is absolutely wonderful. Probably not scripture, may not be scripture. I, I'm not saying that it is, but I am saying that a lot of that stuff is extremely good. And that one is especially great. The prayer of Manasseh, how he repents. But even though he repented, got right with God, his grandson Josiah comes along as a perfect king. He loved God with all his heart, soul, strength, and mind. He did a perfect job, and yet his perfection and faithfulness to God, reviving everything, his massive revival and repentance for everybody else, getting them all on track, was not enough to re repair the damage of the sin of his grandson Manasseh. Just to go to show us how serious and deadly sin really is. It doesn't just go away. It doesn't just go away. People think it does because that's what we've learned in our mere Christianity or Christianese in this satanic slogans that we've been saying all our life that has no biblical merit at all. And it's very, very severe and very serious. So anyways, yeah, the intensity thing was one thing. And then I mixed it together with the, with the introduction of why I'm not doing sermons is because it feels like it's the right time to do something different and to take the time to really put my material together instead of saying I'm going to do it, actually do it. And this will be one of two um, major documentaries, and I'm probably going to cover the th same stuff again just to make sure it's redundant and people really get it and leading it a different way, leading it to the end times on the next documentary. But this one is about American history and how communism is sneaking in, and it's a very good video. I can't, I can't wait for it to be done. I'm going to go over it very carefully, probably put some sounds and music and keep it interesting, and I'm going over it and over it to make sure it really feels right. And I keep finding mistakes, so I have to go re-edit and readjust everything. It takes forever, so I'm working on stuff, and I, it's really good content, and we desperately need this in this crazy season that we're in. And I want this powerful prophetic utterance and clear perspective, all these things, to be of really significant foundation to the body of Christ. Uh, we desperately need it. We need God. We need him like a, in, in childlike faith, and we need him by his word and, and not to allow ourselves to assume things that simply isn't true because we might take the risk of having God give us a strong delusion because we don't believe the truth. We, we love a lie, and he helps us believe those lies, and that is something we don't want to happen, and it will happen to a lot of people, the Bible says. So it's time to remember our roots, remember the severity of coming to Jesus, and if you really ever are belonged, if you are belong to Jesus now, or ever have truly belonged to Jesus, then what I'm saying makes sense. If it doesn't make sense to you, you're probably in a really kind of like a, what do you call it, premature birth. You know, people bring you out of the womb before you're really gone through the canal and really metamorphosed properly in the canal. You know, the birth canal first one is one thing, and you got to take nine months to go through there properly. You can't come out too much or you'll, it'll die. And same thing when you try to come through the canal for the second birth. You come through Im you know, improperly, thinking there is no duties, there is no things to avoid. Th that is a lie. There is a lot of things we must avoid. There's a lot of things we must obtain and, and maintain in things of spiritual reality that we must continue to grow in. And all these things was what was purchased at the cross. The blood of Jesus paid for it, and we need to come into this again and remember our duties committing to his ways, we're going to understand these things. It's going to be powerful. So praise the Lord. I uh, will talk to everybody later. Um, just want to give you an update. Hope I hit that enough. The intensity factor, we got to bring it back to the church. If we don't have pastors who are in that place and preaching that place, getting that kind of like, the, yes, good message, but it's more like junior high school or, you know, the, the youth group kind of message. Good, makes sense, but it's not that place that rips through the earth. It doesn't come down and deal with the intensity 
intense place where you can really see those places that need to be brought back to your eyes again. Easy to overlook those places in a lot of circles of Christianity, but we can't lose the intensity place. And then we'll see with, with eyes of understanding and be able to know how good and severe God truly is. Amen.